Welcome to Gazroth Tutorials. I'm Gazroth, and today we're going to look at collision events. First, we need to go into build mode, and we need to grab a couple objects and a gizmo. So first, let's grab a trigger and a script. And we need three cubes. We'll just duplicate this one. And in order to get set up, let's open this object panel, this object panel. We'll set this cube to non-collidable and place it inside our trigger so we know where our trigger is. And let's kind of place it so it's not too far away. And we'll have this cube here, this cube here. And in order to get collisions to work, we need to do a couple things. We need to open up our cube. This cube will be the one that we pick up and collide with the other object and trigger. So we need to set it to interactive and grabbable. And we need to go to more, set collision events from to both. Setting to both will allow us to have the cube collide with a player and with another object. So let's go down to object tagged and type in cube. Any object that is tagged cube will now fire off the collision events on the script that is attached to our cube. So we will attach script one to this cube. And then we can open this one. And the only thing we need to do is click on attributes, scroll down and then type in cube. Close that. And then in order to get our trigger to work, we need to make sure enabled is on, trigger on objects tagged, and then object tag cube. And since this is the cube that we're going to be going into this trigger, we need to make sure our attributes is also set to cube. We will leave our trigger open for now because we're gonna need its blue pill later. We're going to change the name of the script to collision events. And we have several events to, we can pick from. We have when trigger is entered by object, when trigger is exited by object, when colliding with object, when colliding with object with info, when colliding with player, and then when colliding with player with info. Now normally, when trigger is entered or exited by object, only fires if the script is attached to a trigger gizmo. However, we're going to use a connection. So let's go to variables, create a new variable of type object, call it trigger. Now we can open up our cube that has the event on it and we're going to drag in our trigger event. And then on world start, when world is started, we can scroll all the way down under events and use the connect to event code block. And we will drag in our trigger and we will connect trigger enter. There's two of them. There's a, a lowercase T and an uppercase T. I always use the uppercase T and we're going to connect it to trigger enter and then we're going to connect another one and it's going to be trigger exit and we're going to connect it to trigger exit. So this will allow us to fire off these events in the same script even though the script is not attached to the trigger. And another thing I want to add is a text gizmo. That way we can see the output without having to go back into build mode and look at the console. And we're going to need another variable, object. We're just going to call this one text. And we have to attach that blue pill into the text object variable on our cube. And we're going to create a string variable. And I'm just going to call this string. So when the trigger is being entered or exited or the collisions are occurring, I'm going to add to our string and then display it on our text box. So what we're going to do is we need to go to values and we need to grab our set to go back to variables, grab our string, and we're going to set string to a value. We need to grab a plus sign 
and we're going to set string to self plus we're going to hand type some stuff in here and it's going to say entered and then we can do the same thing under trigger is exited except for we'll just change enter to exited we do need to add a br at the end of these though or they will just continue on the same line go down to when colliding with object and we'll grab that and we'll just say colliding with object and then when colliding with info we'll set string to string plus colliding with object but we're going to need another plus sign so let's go and do Bring that down here and go like that. Then we can get rid of this and it'll be string plus colliding with object. Don't need the BR here, space. We need another plus sign though. So let's grab this and drop it in there. We need the BR here and it's going to be the position of the collision. So we need to go under typecasting grab the variable as string, and then drop in our point. So this line will read string, which is all the strings above it, plus colliding with object with a space, plus the point of the collision, plus BR so that we can go down to the next line. We're gonna do the same thing down here, except for this one will just say colliding with player. So let's grab this one up here. It'll be set string to string plus colliding with player. And then we'll grab this one from up here and do the same thing. Make sure we drop in the correct point or it might not work. Remove object with player. And now we have to add in our displays. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go down to actions, go to text, display text. And then after every set string, we're gonna display string on our text. And then we can just duplicate this under all our events. So now when I grab this cube and I collide it with the player or this cube or enter or exit in the trigger, that text will display on this text box. So let's clear and reset and then go in, grab our cube. So it collided with the player when I grabbed it. And then it displayed our location, collided with me again. And so the problem with this is, let's see how many times it's firing. Now I, I, I've hit the max of the text box. It's like a thousand characters. So now it, it won't display anymore. It's still running, but it won't add any more text. So what we need to do is we need to add a way to prevent it from colliding more than once. So we're gonna add a Boolean and just call it has collided. And then in our collision events, we will check. So if under events, under control, if not, and so under operator, scroll all the way up, grab a not under logic, has collided. So if has collided is false, it will return true. And then we can do that. But we also need to now set our Boolean has collided to true to prevent it from running multiple times. So now we need to add that to all our collision events. So I'm just going to copy and paste that here, and then we can drag in our code blocks under our if statement. And now we need to create a way to set our, col our has collided back to false. So we're gonna go under events. When event is received, I'm gonna put it on the bottom. And I'm just gonna call it toggle boolean. And we're going to set has collided to not has collided. So if has collided is true, we'll set it to false. If it's false, we'll set it to true. But since it's getting set to true, it'll return it as false. However, we need to now send that event. If we send event to object, it'll fire right away. We don't want that, so we need to use a delay. And we need to make sure it's nested in this if statement, and then we will send toggle bool to self after one second. So our collisions will only happen every second. So now if I clear and reset, and I grab our cube, 
Now it only happened once. Notice my other collision event did not run, and that's because only one of them will run first. Now, if I were to reset and put in my collision, colliding with player with info first and run it, it still will only run the colliding with player. The colliding with player, colliding with object will always run before when colliding with player with info or object with info. You will probably never have both of them in your event at, in, at the same time. So that's not really an issue. So let's reset once again, go in, grab it, colliding with player, colliding with object, trigger entered, and then trigger exited. All right, so just so we can uh, go over what we have done to the objects, the trigger and the scripts, I will go into build mode here and we'll look at the trigger object. This is enabled, it's set to tr objects tagged and then the object tag is cube. So any object that is tagged cube will fire off the events. The cube that is inside this trigger is the only thing is set to not collidable. That way we can just see where the trigger is. This cube, has our collision event script with our trigger variable and our text variable attached. It is set to grabbable. And the only other change we made was cube in attributes and under more collision events from is set to both with objects tagged set to cube. And then our other cube here is just attributes tagged as cube. We can get, close these windows. And now if we look at our script, we have a couple variables that we have created. We have a trigger object, a text object, a string variable, and a has collided Boolean. On world start, we are connecting our trigger objects, trigger enter and trigger exit events to our local trigger enter and trigger exit events, which are these. Now when you do these, you have to make sure that the variables that these events take are requested by these events. So when trigger is entered, we're setting string to string plus trigger entered with a line break. We're then displaying that string on our text box. When trigger is exited by the object, we are setting the string to string plus trigger exited with a line break and displaying string on that text box. When colliding with the object, we're checking if has collided is false. If it is false, we're setting it to true. We're setting our string to string plus colliding with object with the line break, and then we're displaying that string on text. We are then sending toggle bool to self after one second, which is all the way down. And all that does is set has collided to not has collided. When colliding with object with info gives us point normal and velocity. This is very useful, so you can, you'll can you know the point of collision, the normal, and the relative velocity of the object on collision. We're checking if has collided is, is set to false. If it is, we're setting it to true. We're updating our string variable with colliding with object plus the, the point of contact plus a line break. We are displaying that string and then sending toggle bool after one second. Same thing with colliding with player. We're checking if has collided is false, setting it to true, setting our string to colliding with player in a line break, displaying that string, sending toggle bool after a second. And then again, when colliding with player with info, it's the same variables that we are given when colliding with an object with info. If not has collided, so if it's false, we're setting it to true, we're updating our string variable, we're displaying string on text, and then sending our toggle bool to self after one second. That is all I have for object collision. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about the video, or have suggestions for a future video, please let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you liked the video, or if you learned something, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you're notified for all my future videos. I I'm trying to come out with a video every Monday, so that is my current schedule. I have been pretty faithful to it so far this year. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and have a good one.